G'day guys, it's good to see you again. This is I Read Reddit, and today I'm going to be reading some entitled parent stories. If you're new to the channel, then welcome, welcome. I upload here daily, and if you've got the fear of missing out, then you better smash that subscribe button and turn on bell notifications. Now pull up a chair and get comfy, you're going to love this one. So, to start the story off, I work at my school bookstore. We usually get apparel and merchandise every day, but now the school is winding down, we may get new stuff in every other day which is fine for me, as I'm in charge of apparel. On this particular day, I was wearing a popular hoodie in size small. By popular, I mean it had to be restocked every so often, due to how quickly they sold out of the store. I had gotten it days prior, and it was the last one on the rack in that size. I was told by my manager that a new shipment of smalls would be in by the weekend. So I kept the larger sizes on the rack, medium to 3XL, to fill in the gap for the smalls until they had arrived. I am in the front of the store at the cash register, straightening hangers. Enter Entitled Mother and her daughter Entitled Kid. They enter the store like nothing, and I allow them to peruse, before I ask them do they need any help. Of course they said no, so I just left them alone and went back to my register. They go to the hoodies and start looking through the sizes. Are there uh, any more of these hoodies in size small? Uh, no ma'am, as of right now we have no more smalls in store, but we are expecting a shipment in this week, so they will be restocked soon. <sighs> whatever. They continue to look around and grab items. After what felt like forever, they made it to the register for checkout. As I am scanning and bagging their items, I ask them did they find everything in the store they were looking for. No, because you lied and you said there were no smalls, and you clearly have on a small. Uh, I was able to buy the last small before they were all gone. We're accepting another shipment in soon, and if you'd like you can order one on our website. The Entitled Mother then cuts me off and says, Give me yours. Huh? My daughter said she needs a small, and you will give her that small. Uh, no I'm not. We will have more by in by the weekend. And they can be ordered on our website. The Entitled Kid stomps her foot and goes, Give me that small! The General Manager then perks her head out of the office to see what's going on. Is there a problem? Yes! Your employee won't give my daughter that small hoodie. She points to the one that I'm wearing. Ma'am, we don't have any more hoodies of those sizes in small, but we're expecting... Entitled Mom cuts her off and goes, I'm talking about the one she's wearing! The boss looks at me with the most confused face ever. Ma'am, she's not a mannequin. There is no way she can, nor will I allow for her to give you the hoodie off of her back. Please pay and leave. But where the custom is? Entitled Kid scoffs again and rolls her eyes. Just pay for it so we can get the heck out of here. Entitled Mom quickly pays with a card, and as I am giving her the receipt, she snatches it out of my hand. You'll be hearing from my lawyer. And then they leave. When they left, I told my manager the whole story, from when they walked in and to before she intervened. She let me take an early lunch for that. So, some weird stuff happened today. Here's the cast for new readers, or idiots who forget it every time. Me, a trap who can easily change the pitch of his voice. This will become important later on. Entitled Mother, which is a Karen in her 50s. Embarrassed Teenager, boy around 14 years old. Typical asparagus boy. Unathletic, you know, thinnish. So here's the story. I was walking on my way home from school when I see some random Karen with her 14 year old son behind me. I don't really care about them, so I just walk along my typical route. Suddenly I feel something tapping my shoulder. I looked back and I see that it's embarrassed teen. Uh um. Hi. Hi, is there something wrong or why did you tap my shoulder? You look you look nice. I'm a femboy and almost look perfectly like a flat chested girl. Well, uh thanks. The entitled mum then looks at us too excitedly. The entitled boy says back to me, I I, I wanna go on a date date with you. Uh where and when could it could it be? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry that I have to let you down on that one, but I'm already in a relationship. Oh, and, and I'm a guy? I, if you're a straight, you're asking out the wrong person. The entitled teen then suddenly turns pale and white and just mumbled, Oh, sorry. I start walking again and think nothing about it. Suddenly the entitled mum comes up and grabs my shoulder and tries to turn me around. I look at her and she looks at me like she's really mad. You selfish tramp! Why aren't you dating my son? Calm down, I'm sorry that I reject you. You better be sorry. Stop yelling at me, I'm- No! I will keep yelling at you until you have kissed my son! Is your son straight? Yes! Now kiss him or else- 
I go into a lower male voice now. Well, you came to the wrong person. I'm not going to kiss anyone except my boyfriend and family friends, no matter how good they look. I'm loyal to my boyfriend, and I'm not going to cheat on him with your son. Sorry for the inconvenience. I get myself free from her grip, walk away, and I can hear the entitled mom screaming at me. How could you? You fudger! My son deserves better! You're ugly anyways! Anticlimactic ending, but still an jerk entitled mother. So, sorry for any grammatical errors, but I am Italian and I do not know English very well. Also, sorry if this is not an incredibly long or exciting story, but I thought it would be funny to read. This happened a couple of weeks ago. It was the day of my grandmother's funeral. She died in the hospital and I was outside talking to the owner of the funeral company. This dude was also my godfather and I had a very good relationship with him. It might sound weird that my godfather is the owner of a funeral company, but to me it's really not. He's known me since I was a baby and he treated me like I was his son. Also, to me, his job is just like any other job. And it even has its benefits. Anyways, here we go. I was, and still am, 17. The story's cast is Entitled Mother, Girlfriend, or my godfather, not girlfriend, sorry, Entitled Kid, even though he doesn't play a huge role in the story, and me, yours truly. We were just outside the hospital, talking to each other. Parked in front of us were all the company vehicles, including the one you're thinking about. The funeral car, of course. All of a sudden, Entitled Mom approached us. Hello? Um, hello? The Entitled Mom had a kid just next to her, and he was holding a drink. I was wondering if my son could take a ride on the, um, the limousine? She then pointed her finger to the horse. I think it's called that in English. Hearse. It took me a while to respond for two reasons. The first one was because that day I had so many thoughts going through my head, and a stranger coming to me out of nowhere caught me by surprise. I am a very introverted person, and I find it difficult to talk to people I don't know. The second reason was because I was holding my laugh. She legitimately thought that the hearse was a limousine. Oh, I'm sorry to say this, but that's not- Are we going to say no to a little child? At this point, I don't know what to say. Miss, believe me, you don't want your son to go in that thing. Ugh, why are you so stingy? Even if he spills his drink in the limousine, it won't be a problem. You have enough money to buy a limousine, so you'll surely have enough to clean it. This is when my godfather steps in. Hey, excuse me miss, what do you want to do? I want my son to ride the limousine. My godfather then said the most epic thing I have ever heard. He thinks for a bit and goes, well, sure, he can ride the limousine, but only if he has a coffin to be in. The entitled mom's a bit confused about the response. She takes a good second look at the limousine, and then she realized. I have no idea how she confused a hearse for a limousine. Perhaps the company logo was out of her view or something. However, she then realized her mistake. Her skin got pale and she just walked away as fast as she can with her kid. Me and my uh, godfather just looked at each other and start laughing. Got removed from Pro Revenge, but it's about my entitled mother. On mobile, and English is not my first language. As I have stated in my last post, I had an entitled mother while growing up. I grew up with physical and mental abuse since my only mother wanted kids to get financial support from the state. She had two kids in the end, me and my brother. Cast, entitled mother, witch of the north. F is my brother, me, you know who, and CPSW, uh, my saviors. As mentioned earlier, I survived a bunch of abuse during the early years of my life. I was eight when my brother was born and immediately feared for his life. Thank God she took the abuse out of me instead of him, since he was so small, and it was harder to hide the abuse than on me. Fast forward two years ago and I turned 10. My mother must have thought that I was old enough to think of going to child protective services. What she didn't know was that I was indirectly contacted them a year and a half earlier since my teachers found the marks on my body. She told me to pack a bag and leave her house within five minutes. I started to panic and ran as fast as I could. About four minutes later, she came and told me to hurry up, and what didn't fit in the bag had to be left behind. I ran a bit faster and left as fast as possible. 
What she didn't know was that I had laid plans for weeks about directly contacting Child Protective Services this time. Revenge time. My mum didn't think about the distance between our home and the Child Protective Services headquarters. It was barely 15 to 16 kilometers from the house to headquarters, and I started walking immediately. The only thing I hadn't taken into account was me getting thrown out. It was late in the afternoon when I started walking, so it was a bit late when I arrived at the headquarters. I'm short, you know, about 5 foot 4 I believe, so it took a while. They had closed when I got there. I decided to stay on the pavement until they opened up the next morning. It was during September and it got quite cold in the country I live in at the time, so I was ready to fly through the door when their opening staff arrived. I got inside and they handed me a blanket and a mug of cocoa and told me to explain what I was doing on the pavement. I explained from the start and showed them the marks on my body. To be honest, the look on their face was mostly shocked and had a furious look in them, but they were sitting with their 10 year old, so they kept calm while I spoke. When I was doing speaking crap hit the fan, they called some of the employees to come as fast as possible and called the cops to get them ready to deploy. As soon as the Child Protective Services workers arrived, they started working immediately on the case. About one and a half hours later, they walked over to me and asked if I wanted to come with. Not because they needed me on the site, but more so I could get closure. I said I wanted to go just to get my brother and we left. I walked the day before and we drove this time, so it took much less time to get there. My mom was still half asleep and both cops and Child Protective Services forced their way in and she refused to let them in. The conversation as I remember went as follows. What do you think you're doing breaking into my home? Do you have a warrant? The CPSW points at me standing in the door. My mum looks confused and angry. You know he's lying, right? The child protective service worker says he slept outside the HQ and the story was too detailed to be a lie from a 10 year old kid, not to mention the marks on his body. He ran away last night and the marks he made himself. The CPS worker didn't buy it, and the cops started to put her in handcuffs and began to move toward the car. I got myself to walk further and ran into my brother's room, and took him into my arms and walked downstairs again. Not long after we moved in with a temporary foster family, my mum got locked up and got 10 years for child endangerment, neglect and abuse, and so on. She got taken away the right to have kids in the future as well. I experienced almost the same 7 months after I lived with my dad, but that's another story. It's been 9 years now, and I live with my wonderful boyfriend in an apartment in another country. My mum doesn't know where my brother is and me are, so we're all good. Thanks for reading my story. Hey guys, I read Reddit here. For more juicy content just like that, Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!